Hey everybody and welcome. This is the first video in a series of Let's Build videos where we're going to create a game from scratch. Thank you everyone for subscribing and hitting the notification icon, that really helps me out. And of course, thank you to my patrons and my members. Your names are going to be running across the bottom of the screen as we speak. So I'm at the stage now where I've created a new game and I've simply gone into editing the scripts.rpy. What I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm going to go into file and I'm going to add a project folder and then I'm going to navigate to the folder for the project which is there and i'm going to go select folder and what that means is that now i can see the entire game directory like this and the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new folder by right clicking on the game type in new folder and this one's going to be called scripts like that and i'm going to click and drag all of my scripts into that folder like so and that just means that we can keep things a little bit more organized what I'm now going to do is I'm going to create another new folder and this one's going to be called init or initialize just to make sure that we don't accidentally clash with any other file names like that and then inside of that folder we're going to create a new file and we're going to call this one classes.rpy like that and what that means is that when we define our classes, which is what we're going to do in this video, we can do that inside this file and that will be in the initialize. Now, what we also need to do is copy our GUI and our options into the initialize because they are kind of part of that whole group of classes where we define things at the start and then we don't have to do it again. Screens, we're going to move those into individual files and so we don't need to touch that for the moment so we're going to go into our classes to rpi dot rpy and we're going to type in init python colon and what that's saying to renpy is that this is part of the initialization of our game and to do this first and then what we can do here is we can create a whole load of variables and classes and declare a load of stuff that we want to happen at the very beginning of our game and what we're going to do is we're going to define our class so it's going to be a class and it's going to be a place and it's going to inherit from objects like so and then we have to put in our colon next thing we want to do is define what happens when we initialize this class so we type in def underscore underscore init underscore underscore and then we can say what the properties of this class are going to be first thing has to be self and the next thing because it's a place we want it to have a name and then we want it to have a value because we're going to unlock these by buying them and then we obviously need an unlocked flag and we can do that with a small u and a capital l there we go that helps us see that a little better and i think that's going to do for the moment we can always add properties afterwards so we need to put a colon there again so we need to say self dot name equals name self dot value equals value and as you can see we've hit upon a snag because that's coming up as a keyword so what we're going to have to do is change that to maybe cost and see if that happens again cost is there so that's not keyword so we can say cost no problems at all self dot unlocked equals unlocked like so and that's our class initialized and defined so if we were to save that and then come into our RenPy project and launch it, there should be no errors at all. When we hit start, it plays the standard RenPy stuff, job done. That's our first class created.
Now, Pythonically, we just hit enter and we create a space between our class. It doesn't even have to be a space, really. It works on tabs, but we're going to keep our project a little bit more organized. And we're going to create a class for our main character. And all this does is just means that we can keep all of our variables contained within that class rather than having loads of variables. Um, and we're only going to define one character so we don't have to worry too much. You could get away with having simply just variables for his name, his weight, his height and all that sort of thing. But in the purpose for the purposes of being good Pythonically, we're going to create a class. So we're going to call a class and we're going to have a person class. It's going to be a game object. And then we want to initialize this one as well with self. And then this guy is going to have to have a name as well. And then he's going to have a weight. And then he's going to have a amount of money. And name, weight, cash. I think that'll do for now. So we just need to say, we do need to define this self.name equals name self dot weight equals weight and self dot cash equals cash like that and now we could put in defaults for these as well but i think the best thing to do now is just to define our classes fairly simply like that so what we're going to do first is create our main character. So we're going to say MC equals person and his name's going to be Dave. His weight's going to be 80. That's kilograms, not pounds before anyone says anything. And cash, I think a good starting amount of cash is $100 like that. And again, we're going to save that. We're going to save that hit our launch project and we're going to check that we haven't created any problems run our game like that marvelous now what we can do to check that this guy exists is go into our script so what we're going to do is we're going to say hi we're going to say hi with a capital H and we're going to open our square brackets and we're going to say mc.name just to check that that actually works and then we're going to launch it say hi and hi dave there you go so you know that character exists and its name is dave and we could also put in the other variables if we wanted to like so now in a later script we can later part of our scripting we can actually put in an option that allows you to actually create the character yourself or to change its name so that you could have the character named after yourself but for now we're just going to work with this format and that just makes life a little bit easier so we've got our person class set up we've got our main character and now we're going to create some locations and what i want to do is create a house with different rooms and then the rooms are unlocked when you buy them as an extension to your original house now i think for the sake of less code in the long run is we're going to create a list of them so we're going to create a list called rooms like this we're going to give it a capital r and we're going to say it is a list and then we're going to say rooms.append and then we're going to append it with a place and it's going to first room we're going to come up with is going to be the well you need a kitchen kitchen has to be room number one doesn't it really and that has to be a string before we forget and the cost of that room is obviously zero and then unlocked is true if we can spell true correctly like so now what we want to do is Again, save it, run our code to check that there's nothing weird happening. And we have typed the name of our list wrong. Rooms, rooms with an S, we'll run that again. Check that it's all tickety-boo. Happy days, it hasn't crashed, we're fine. So we can carry on with our development. Now it's a good practice 
for you to save and test whenever you apply something new or major like this. Because we're now going to copy paste this, we want to make sure that it's absolutely correct before we do that. Otherwise, we might have to change 20 or 30 different things when we get a crash. So we're going to simply put our cursor at the end here. This is only going to work if you're using Atom. If you're using the default RemPy editor, you'll have to do a proper control and C, control and V. But we just hit control C here and we create a whole bunch of rooms like that. So the next room is going to be the bedroom. And again, that's going to be a starting room. So that's going to be true and have a value of zero because we want them to be at least have a kitchen and a bedroom and a hallway. Now we're going to have a living room and that's going to have a value of, let's say, a thousand dollars just to have a living room put in. So that's going to be false now what we could do which is what I'm going to do is actually remove all of these now what I'm going to do is I'm going to control C and I'm just do that a whole bunch of times and that just means that we haven't got to keep changing this flag we can just change the name of the value so we've got a living room let's have a conservatory that needs to be let's say five thousand dollars and these are going to go the price is going to go up quite dramatically so in the context of uh, maybe a game the first extension is easy and then they get more and more difficult or more and more expensive as you go on so this one could be a basement and having a basement put in is going to cost you ten thousand dollars and next one could be a library and this one could be $20,000. Then we could have a loft conversion, which is gonna cost 40,000. The next one we could have, let's just pick a random room, a second bedroom, which is gonna be 80,000 and you could have it going up exponentially like this obviously it's not necessarily a good idea because if you were in a game and the cost of your extensions was going up quite that dramatically then that would be um, a bit soul destroying so you'd probably want it going a little bit more sensibly than this but these are kind of good starting values second bedroom then we could have a bathroom put in and I think for the sake of showing how this could work, we're actually going to have this one only have being a thousand as well. And then we could have an en suite bathroom attached, which is probably going to be quite cheap as well. So we'll say that's going to be 2000. And then we could have a guest bathroom put in. And that's probably going to be more in the $10,000 sort of region. And then we could have a driveway put in and that's going to cost maybe like three thousand dollars and then we can have maybe a back garden which maybe is going to cost another ten thousand and then maybe a front garden which would again cost ten thousand dollars and then let's say maybe this one's going to be a patio which could be a five thousand dollar kind of job and then maybe we could even have a terrace put in which could cost again ten thousand dollars and then do you know what just for poops and giggles let's go with another one and this one's going to be the swimming pool and that one's going to be a thirty thousand dollar jobby so we've got a nice big list of rooms there. And now we need to use this list in some way. So the first thing we want to do is start off our starting location. Now we could have location being a property of our person class. However, it is a bit overkill putting that in the class because it is just going to be a variable. So what we can say is location equals and then we're going to say rooms 
and then we're going to say he's going to start off in the hallway so we're going to say rooms two so this is zero this is one this is two so he's going to start off in the hallway dot name this way if we ever change these values this is always going to be correct if we change this value and we have this as just a string that we define um, by typing the value of the string if we change this we then need to change this so it's always good practice to do this instead so that you don't have to mess around with changing the values of multiple variables you want to keep your code in such a way that when you change one thing you haven't then got to change another 50 things you want it to be as kind of connected as possible so we're saying that our location is uh, the hallway and what we want to do now is save that and again we've typed a whole load of new code so we're going to test our project make sure that it's fine hit start make sure that it's not falling over very good so now we want to come back to our script.rpy and we're going to say welcome to and then we're going to type in location like that and we can test our code again after we've saved it of course just to check that that actually okay so hi Dave welcome to hallway not always ideal so we could change the name of our locations to the kitchen the bedroom the hallway it certainly wouldn't hurt to do that I'm not going to do that because I'm lazy <laughs> so that's something to consider so we've got our places set up we've got our character set up so now we need to put our character into that place which we've done now for those of you who follow along with the video series thus far will know how to create a map screen and do all of that but to start off with we're going to keep this nice and simple and we're just going to have a game loop with a list so that we can check that if we change the amount of cash we can open a new location so we want to kind of function test what we've got so far so what we're going to do is define a new variable remember that now we're in a renpy code and not python code so we need to start with a dollar sign and we're going to say uh, playing equals true and we're going to get rid of that capital l and change it for a small l and then we're going to say while playing and that's our game loop and what we're going to do is we're going to create a menu and the first part is we're going to define what the text in the menu and we're just going to put dot 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 and that's just to make sure that the ui appears for that and we don't just get a choice menu now what we're going to do is we're going to add an add cash button and we're going to create that menu and we're going to say mc dot cash we need to put a pound sign there because it's a so mc dot cash plus equals thousand we're function testing so it doesn't matter you know we'll create a way for him to earn money in a different episode <laughs> so now what we can do is test that by changing this to mc.name apostrophe s cash and then mc.cash like that and we're going to check that that works going to run it make sure that there's no massive falling over in the code well done you've created a highway dave welcome and now we're going to say dave cash 100 so we know that that button is functioning as intended so we hit escape quit yes i want to quit and i accidentally put a second apostrophe in there which we do not need so that's that gone so that's got us to this stage of our game uh, i'm going to carry on in the next episode i hope you found this fun and useful and i'll see you in the next one thanks very much Bye bye